As the former frontman of the group Genesis, Peter Gabriel was once known for his outlandish costumes and wild stage performances. His solo career has spanned more than three decades now, and so many of his songs like Sledgehammer and In Your Eyes have become classics. His new album pays tribute to some of his favorite fellow rock legends, from Bowie to Radiohead. And so we asked Peter Gabriel to talk about his life and his musical influences in tonight's playlist. Without a noise, without my pride, I reach out from the inside. I began as a songwriter, really. I think in Genesis days, too, we were a bunch of songwriters rather than a bunch of musicians, which is how most people start. I may be remembered as a guy who wore the flower on my head or got up in crazy costumes. And if it feels, feels good and it's fun and you can explore ideas, uh, then go for it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The first record I bought when I saved up my pocket money was with the Beatles. Please Please Me was coming over the radio. I would sit um, in the back of my parents' car you know, when we were on these long drives down to the coast. And what people forget, I think, is that at the time, it was really uh, rebellious, rough, mischievous, and full of life, uh, and irresistible to any young person. Beatles were, uh, you know, a huge influence as I was growing up, and, um, you know, continued to be as there was all that revolution around. Um, their success. A change is gonna come. Oh, yes it is. I think I would have to choose an Otis track and a change gonna come might be one. I was extremely lucky in 1967, 17 years old, to go and see Otis Redding perform at the Ram Jam Club in Brixton in London. And when he came on, it was like the sun coming out. It was just this amazing voice totally in command, great band, great grooves. Just the way Otis put the message over. I think it's a supreme interpreter, and what a heart. I can remember where I was when I first heard Hendrix's Hey Joe, which was at school in a particular room upstairs, and it was coming, in fact, in the next door room and my ear pricked up and I went in and listened to it and just had to find out about who this artist was, you know. And I think particularly when you're growing up, songs are like memory stamps, you know. People go through life and they have these intense experiences that are really beautiful or really horrible that just get locked in to a certain song. Blue, here is a shell for you. Joni Mitchell's Blue would be another one. Um, Joni, I think, uh, I fell in love with not because of just the writing, but also she was an experimenter. You know, she was pushing the musical boundaries, both in the, in the way she wrote harmonies and then just uh, exploring arrangements, and a um, uh, great artist. And I think it's going to rain. Andy Newman is another person. I think he's a, a master songwriter and does beautiful arrangements. And I think some of the stuff he does for the films seem deceptively simple, but um, they are really the work of a master. I went for I Think It's Gonna Rain Today. I think it is one of his best songs. It's um, not necessarily a very positive message, but it's beautifully constructed, elegant songwriting with a lot of heart. Yes. Come on. 